Next, we'll take a look at how we can use Ansible Tower to bring in our existing legacy management scripts without having to refactor everything immediately. It's one of the nice things about working with Ansible and Ansible Tower is that it doesn't make us choose one paradigm or the other. We can always include our existing processes, usually pretty easily, whether it's at a command level or at a script level or even something else entirely, start incorporating that into working with some of the native Ansible modules really on our own terms. So here we'll be focusing on the creates parameter, which is a quasi uh, approach to uh, being declarative in that as long as the bash script actually creates a flag file, we won't have this module run twice. And so we can actually see that ignore if we want to uh, in a follow-up run. We'll start by taking a look at the job template. So it's got most of the usual suspects here, the inventory uh, that we have to target, uh, credentials so that we can authenticate with the system, a playbook that comes from a dropdown. We'll take a look at that playbook here briefly. It's not very uh, involved, really just we're using the script module and we're calling out to a version controlled file uh, that's in our repo. And we do see that we're passing here the creates parameter and that this module will look for this file to exist and subsequent runs and, and won't actually run that again. So one of the things that definitely comes up with scripting and some of the approaches that you can take with scripting is that uh, if you start to include things like bash scripts or anything else into your automation flows, in a lot of cases it's imperative and they'll just keep trying to do the work. Uh, I'm sure we've all got a little bit of experience with that to say the least. And so this is nice because as long as the uh, it does include you know some type of touch of a file or something like that, you can actually go and look for that and, uh, and keep it from running more than once. So here we should be able to go ahead and run this and we can take a look at the system and see in this case the output that it's going to run from here uh, while it's doing its job over here. Looks like it's already done that. And so we can uh, go ahead and cat this file and take a look and it, it looks like it's actually dropping this more like a log file or something along those lines. Um, and from here, what we should be able to do though is run this twice and see that it won't uh, actually, because it is going to find that file on the file system, it's not actually going to uh, do this twice. And so it does see this file now and we can you know, see it doesn't have anything. It's just an empty file, but it does exist. And we can see that running. And so from here now, it's actually ignoring, it's skipping the work because it does already see that having uh, been created as a file. So this is just a quick look at how we can introduce a, a bash script something maybe that we've been doing from an operational perspective for a long, long time without having to go and convert all of that into an, a native Ansible approach immediately. And so it becomes a bit of a win-win while we're off and automating in all kinds of other directions.